Hello everyone, this is Michael and I'm the lead developer for the ShapeDiver Viewer. This is the second video of the tutorial series for the ShapeDiver Viewer API. I'll link the first video here if you missed it. In that first video we have already discussed the basic setup and today we are going to focus on parameters. Part of that basic setup was the creation of a session. Just as a reminder, your models running on ShapeDiver are hosted on one of our geometry backend systems. The access to triggering customizations and downloading competition results is controlled by sessions. Sessions have parameters that make it possible to interact with them. There are many different types of parameters and we will have a look at a few of those today. You can have a look at all parameter types in the link below. In the first part of this video, we will have a look at some of the basic usage of parameters. Each parameter API object has quite a few properties that can be read out and used. It also has some functionality that might come in handy, so I'll show you that as well. In the second part of this video, I'll focus on the different types of parameters and how they can be used to create a very simple UI. You can then use those principles for your own application and create a UI that looks much better than mine. Without further ado, let's start right away with some coding to get started with some basics. Alright, so on the right side you can see the model that we are going to use today. Um, it's one of my shelf models with this cat picture as a ground plane. And on the left you can see the code we are going to start with. It's basically code that we did in the first video with the ticket of this model. Now once we are going to build this, we can see on the left hand side this white bar because there's, this is where the menu goes, so I made some space for that. We will populate this menu later on. Now in the beginning, let's start off on how to get a parameter API object. So there are three different ways of doing that. Um, there's the get parameter by ID, get parameter by name and get, par get parameter by type functions. So in our case, we just use the name length in this case, and we set the value of this parameter to a different value than default. The default in this case is 10, we set it to four. Now this doesn't change anything yet because we also have to call the customize command on the session. Once we do that, a customization request is sent to our servers and as you can see, the model has been changed. Now to show you some parts after another, I put here this timeout so that we can see the different steps. So this is just a two second timeout. All right, next I can show you that how to reset to the default value. So before we set it to four, now we reset it and now it should be 10 again. And as we can see, it for two seconds, the shelf is visible with a value of four for the length parameter and afterwards it goes back to 10. After that, we set it to six, again with a delay of two seconds in between. So we can see it's going to 10 and then to 6 at the end. And now I want to show you another function um, where we reset it to the session value. So the session value is the value that is currently um, the value active in the scene after the last customization call. So you can see here we customize the last time with 6. Now we set it to 3 and reset it to the session value and now it should be 6 again. So we can check that. And now in the end is six and we locked it to the console and here, yes, it's six. Perfect. And now last but not least, there's also a function where we can verify if the, if a value is valid for this parameter. So in our case, this is a number parameter. So we check for some string if this is valid. Obviously it shouldn't be. So once we are running all of our commands in a row, in the end, in the console, we should see, ah, perfect, the message, the error message. This input could not be validated. All right, so this is the final result of what we're going to do today. The only thing that's not in this video is the parameter grouping. So you see this geometry, material, image plane, email, export options. Um, you will still have that in the repository that is linked below, but I just excluded this from this video because it would have taken too long. 
all of the other things are in this video so let's start right off all right so we start fresh again so i create now all of this in the separate file to make it a bit clearer so i create the function here that we are going to call from our index file later on and this function only takes the session as an input so as i showed you before i created this diff on the left hand side which we are going to populate with parameter objects so I'll get this diff with the get element by D function now. So the first thing we're going to do now is to order our parameters. Parameters can have an order property and this specified in which order they should be displayed. In my case here, if they don't have an order property, I set the order to infinity, which you can see in a second which means that they will be added at the end. So here you can see if the order is not specified, I set it to infinity. All right, now that we have ordered our parameters, we can loop through them and create elements for each one of the parameter items. Okay, so just for convenience, I read out the parameter objects of the, out of the array. And the first thing we're going to do is hide the parameter object if it, the hidden property is set to true. So the order and hidden property can both be adjusted on our platform. So the hidden property just tells us that we don't want to show this. Pretty easy. And now we have to do some separation for the different types of parameters. So just for us to know if we already have displayed all the types that are currently in this object, uh, my default for this switch st statement is that we lock the type to the console. But for now, let's start with the Boolean type. So the boolean parameter is basically just a toggle. And now I create a separate function for that so that we can create this toggle object and adjust the session with that. So now I create this function create boolean parameter element where I supply the session and the parameter object. As we also want to create a diff around this input element and also a label for this parameter where we can show the name of it. Um, I will outsource that in a different function because we will need that for all of the other parameter objects as well. So here I create the function create parameter diff, which takes the parameter object as an input. And now we can create a new diff here. And as we have to add the diff to another object, I will now pass through the menu diff that we read out before through all of those functions so that we can add our parameter diff there. Probably should have done that before. All right, so now we can add our parameter diff into the parent. Now we have to create a label. So for this label, we either take the display name of the parameter, which can be defined, but doesn't have to, or the name of the parameter, which is always defined. So as you can see here, for the inner text, I choose the display name if it's available or the name if it's not available. And now I just return the whole diff. All right, so we already used this function for Boolean parameter element and we will use this function for all other parameter elements as well. And now, we create an input element. So in our case, as this is a Boolean parameter, we create a checkbox, but you could 
create any input element and convert it into a boolean value if you want to. Um, this is just the probably the easiest and most straightforward way of doing that. So here I set the type to checkbox and I set the checked property to the value of our current parameter. So I'll check here if it's true or if the if there's a string which is called true. So I know you could do this a bit easier, but I just wanted to make it clear here. And now we create the onChange function so that we once the input element changed, we set our parameter object value to it. So you can see parameter object dot value then equals the input element to checked and then we call session customize. Okay, so now we only have to call this create parameter menu function in our index file and now we see we have our first element, the height door toggle. And you can see the doors are hidden and shown again depending on if the toggle is active. Okay, now we go to number types of parameter. So there is the float type, there's integer, there's odd, there's even, and there are even some other ones. So I start here with the float type, but just so you know, uh, this will be a function for all number types in general already, because there's only very little separation between them. In this case, we need a range slider. Again, you could have any other type of input elements and convert it to a number, but a range slider here makes, makes sense. And for number parameters, you also have the minimum and maximum values defined. So I can set those here so that the range slider is adjusted accordingly. All right, so the only difference between the different types, so I now add those types here, besides the float type, I also add the integer, odd and even. So the only difference for our menu is now the step size of the slider. For example, for integer, it's always a step of one because you don't have any decimal places. So I set that here. For the odd and even parameters, there's not much to do besides setting the step size to two. And our default value is already odd or even. So with a step size of two, the other values will also be odd or even. And last but not least, for the float type, we have to adjust our the value that we're getting from our parameter object, which is a decimal place, with the number of decimal places, um, to be converted into a step size. So you can see how I do that here. You can just copy paste that. And now in our own change function, we only have to set the value. So that's already it. And now we have two sliders. One is this length slider. You, you can see how the length is adjusted. And one is for the board height. So here you can see a bit better how the board height is adjusted. The hiding of the door still works. So, okay, on to the next parameter type. For the next type is the color type. So it, this is a pretty straightforward type. You could again do this via like a string or something else, but in this case, we choose a color toggle, a uh, color swatch, so that you can actually select the color. Um, the, so we set the type here to color. And for the value, there has to be a small adjustment made so that the color swatch already recognizes the first default value we set here because our way of representing the colors is just a bit different. So we have to shorten it via the alpha values in the end and also have to set the beginning to a hashtag. And now we can change our color already. So please note that we're using the onChange function here instead of the onInput because if we were to use onInput, we would send parameter updates all the time and this would cause your computations to fail because you're sending too many requests. So just keep that in mind. 
Okay, for our next type is actually the easiest, so I should have probably started with that. It's the string type, where we basically just supply a string. So we set the type to text and <laughs> directly set the value and that was already it. And we have a string type here where I set here a different value for the default material. So you can see the default material change here. So for our next type, we are going to do the string list parameter type. So here we create a drop down because we have different choices. So this parameter object still takes a string because we are only going to send the index of the object that is currently selected. So here in this case, instead of an input element, we are going to create a select element. And now we are going to loop through the choices. So for parameter objects that are of type string list, these choices are always defined. And now for each one of those choices, we are going to create an option that we are going to add to the select element. So the value of this option is our running value of the loop. And the inner text is the choice value. So this is the name of the current option. All right, so in the end, we only have to set the onChange function for this select element, which is pretty much straightforward. And once we save that, we can already see our dropdown where we now have the different options that were in the choices, in the list of choices. All right, and last no, but not least, there's only one type left that we didn't do for this example, which is the file parameter type. So for the file parameter type, we actually upload a file, which don't worry, is pretty easy to do. So here, we create again a new function and in this case it takes a file blob over string but you don't need to really worry about that you can see in a second how easy it is to do that we set the type of this input element to file and now we set the accept property of this input element to the different types of files that can be accepted so these are stored in the format and i basically just join them with a comma now, there is a little difference here in the onChange function because we have to check if there are files selected so that basically our first selected file is then provided as an input for the value. And that's already it. So once I save that, I can now select a different image, me on the tractor, <laughs> which is now the ground plane. That's already it. All right, that was it for today. You learned how to use the parameters of a session via the Viewer API. In the next video, we will have a look at exports. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy coding and see you next time.